Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. There are a few updates for you in this video. Firstly, the tank has hit a new biological milestone which I have to deal with, which I'll show you in a minute. The angels, did they get on? Did they not get on? Are they still in there? I will show you that in a second. I'm adding two new fish today and I also completely changed my plans with regards to how I'm going to be doing a water change. Originally it was going to be connected to the coral farm and it is still going to be connected to the coral farm to some extent but it's going to be done in a different way uh, just to make it easier for me. So, um, so yeah, let's get on. The first thing I need to let you know, the first clip you're about to see was me at like seven in the morning and I am not upbeat at seven in the morning. I am tired and not in the mood to film. Now, the reason I was filming early was because I had released the angelfish at midnight the night before. So it was pitch black. So I couldn't film the actual release, but I wanted to film my first experience of what I saw the next morning and how they got on. So I'll show you that and then I will, once I've done that, I'll then give you a more up-to-date uh, tank update. Right, now as you can see, the lights are off and it's because it's first thing in the morning. Last night at midnight, I let the angelfish out, the annularis and the gold flake. And I've just come down this morning just to see uh, how they're doing because this is uh, this is the moment of truth basically. So this is the Starkey damselfish, not an angelfish. Uh, just so people know, a lot of people ask uh, what it was and also why I didn't mention it last week. No reason, I just personally I find the angelfish more interesting but it is one of the nicest damselfish you can get. Uh, right, so we have the first angelfish to show you, where you go, which is the annularis. Now you can just see it's uh, it's down there. Now interestingly it's just gone into the hole where the blue face lives. And I saw it just a minute ago. They have been displaying to each other, but again, no aggression. Just, just showing how, um, how big they are to each other. But the blue face, uh, as I mentioned previously, is very, very shy. Has been completely fine with it so far. The gold flake, which you just saw then, has been doing exactly what it was doing in the box, where it's literally just swimming around. It hasn't got a care in the world, that fish. I don't know where it's gone now. Interestingly, the annularis and the gold flake seem to almost get on with each other. They've spent a lot of time swimming around together, as you can see here. No signs of aggression at all. It might be because they were in the box right next to each other for the last week. Gold flake has got great personality because even when the blue face saw it, which is probably double its size, and when the majestic saw it, which is still a little bit bigger than it, it just, it turned to its side, it goes, look how big I am, look how tough I am, I'm not going anywhere. And, and they, uh, they basically ignored it. You can see what a massive difference it makes when you introduce a fish in an acclimation box and leave it there for a week, or if you just throw it in. Because if I had just thrown it in, there would have been an all out war. Right, now that's tired Ryan out of the way, so hyperactive Ryan's back, and I'll give you an update on how the tank is doing right now. Just to mention, if anyone wonders why I'm so dirty, this is the reality of being a coral farmer. So I've been cutting up corals all morning and I come and film a video in the afternoon. Right now, there's gonna be one pretty significant change to the original design of this system. Now, originally, I was gonna use the GHL maxi dosers to run through the hole in the back wall and then down to the bottom of the garden and connect it to the coral farm. Now, the barrel that it was gonna be connected to is only 145 liters. And I just thought, I'm not gonna be, it's, it sounds terrible, but basically I've got so lazy uh, from the coral farm because it's so easy to use. I try and make everything as minimal maintenance as possible. So what I'm doing instead is I'm going to have, I own a, a strip of land just behind the tank. Uh, it's just, it's a piece of grass that, that I can't use. I can't even see it. There's no, there's no reason to have it basically. Um, so what I've done is I bought two 600 litre black water containers, which essentially just like something that collects rainwater. Uh, and I'm gonna use one for RO, so I'll be able to free up this cupboard because I can take out the RO section and I can put all my dosing stuff and, and tidy all the wires up. And the other one is going to be for uh, mixing salt water. Now the reason I've gone for 600 litre containers, and this will show you just how lazy I am, is because the salt comes in 600 litre uh, quantities. So one bag of salt that I buy can mix 600 litres. So I will literally just cut the top off the bag, pour it into the tank, uh, I'm gonna have a power head in it, and then it's going to probably change 
uh, about seven liters of water a day, which works out to be roughly the amount that I want uh, per week. So it'll be almost constant water change. Uh, and I'll probably get it done in the middle of the night. So. Right now, as I just said, this is filmed about a week after the last clip. And miraculously, the angels all get on with each other. The lymphocystis on the blue face has mostly gone now. You can see there's just a little tiny bit left on it. Uh, that will probably fall off in the next week. The annularis has become the boss of the tank, which surprised me because she's actually smaller than the blue face. But what I found quite interesting, although I did expect this to happen, it could have gone either way. The blue face could have got either more shy and spent more time in the rock or less shy with there being more fish in, in the tank. And it's actually got less shy. Now the reason for this is the more fish, the more safe they feel from predators because they see everything else swimming around. And uh, yeah, you can see it actually comes out pretty often now. The gold flake is an absolute champ. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about the next fish which is about to go into the tank with regards to how they will interact together but she holds her own against some big angels so I'm sure she can uh, she can hold her own against uh, some other fish as well. The only reason I'm concerned is because they're a similar colour. Generally speaking very very happy. My first sort of tank bred fish which isn't a clownfish and uh, I definitely will be getting more. I will probably end up with a regal angel which is also tank bred majestic again not a lot to say doing really well and um so yeah overall very very happy with how they all interact with each other all eating all fat minimal aggression cannot ask for more if i'm honest the acclimation box genuinely works brilliantly and if you don't have one for if you've got a big tank where you're adding fish all the time you it's worth every penny with regards to the tank itself though, there is one monumental change. And that monumental change is so subtle to notice. So you might wonder how can it be monumental? And that is algae growing. Algae has just started to grow on the rockwork for the first time. I think it's been six weeks now, maybe a bit longer. And uh, so I have decided that I want to respond to this immediately because if I just let it grow, you can see there's patches here, here, here. There's a little bit here, and it's about to go everywhere. So although I said I thought I'd got away with a, um, a, a very minimal ugly stage, I don't think it's possible to avoid it completely. Now, I already have cleanup crew in here. The cleanup crew obviously are the urchins and the snails. They are doing a great job of creating a maze on the back of the tank, as you can see. Uh, but for whatever reason, that, well, there's not enough of them in here to be able to deal with this. So I do have a solution, and, uh, and that is a fish or two. Right now, the solution I was referring to is actually two fish. Now, there are seven of the subspecies of this fish, which might give you an idea of what I'm going to uh, be picking. If you want to test yourself, you can put your answer in the comment section below. Uh, and then see if you're right. Now the reason I picked two of these fish is because they, I could probably get away with one, but they've been living together, so I might as well keep them together. Uh, the second reason, and the main reason this is the fish that I've gone for, is because it is my girlfriend's favorite fish. Now all the time I get people who come visit the coral farm, uh, or even sometimes during the consultation, say, my partner hates my tank. If you want your partner to not hate your tank, let them be included in it. Let them pick some of the livestock. And because we're very defensive over our tanks and we only want what we want in them. But the reality is, if your partner's happy with your tank, you have a much easier life. So, um, so yeah, so as I said, I, she's picked this fish and uh, it will soon be in here. Now I don't have to go very far at all uh, to collect these fish because they are in the coral farm already. It's not, I have so many fish in there that some of them I'm moving over and uh, I don't need any more basically. So it's just a, it's just a short walk over to here and um, I'll take you inside and I might even give you a little, a little update on some of the corals. Right now at the very back of the coral farm I have two tanks. There's one at the top which is where I grow the zoas and as you can see, they are due for a frag session. And then at the bottom, just underneath this tank, I have another tank, which is essentially uh, the tank which I ignore most of the time. 
Now this is where all the Xenia grows. I have some uh, very, very bright green star polyps. I've got a different type of green star polyps. Just anything that sort of doesn't fit in the other tanks goes in this one. Even there's a couple of like giant pieces of SPS growing at the back. The bit that will shock you the most is actually, I don't know if you can see it, there's an acro growing at the back. Now, as I said, this tank is the least attractive tank. I actually don't usually sell from this tank. This is just, as I said, it's, it's sort of like storage for me, essentially. Now, what's strange is I decided to put, uh, at the time, my most expensive fish in this tank, which is this gem tank. Now, these are the fish I was talking about earlier. These are the fish I'm going to put into the water box tank to, um, to deal with any impending algae issue. As you can see, they're a little bit uh, stressed at the moment. They've only been in this box for about two minutes. Uh, I put the box in and I put pellets in, as you can see, and uh, they were interested, but not that interested. And then a couple of minutes later, I went and got some mysis and they went straight in. So that tells me two things. Firstly, fish definitely prefer some foods over others. Uh, I don't know if, it's, if they can taste or if they prefer the taste. And secondly, they are willing to die for mysis, but they're not willing to die for pellets. Uh, now, the reason I say willing to die is because this, if you think about it to a fish, the entrance looks like a big mouth. It was actually a surprisingly easy process. Uh, the gem tank went in first, uh, and then it swam out. Uh, then the copper band, which is in here somewhere, decided to swim in because it was going for the mysis. Uh, and then that swam out, and then the gem tank went back in and then went out, and then the yellow just spent ages trying to work out where the entrance was uh, <laughs> until it eventually went in, and then when they both went in, I closed the, I closed the door. So um, it literally took me about 15 minutes. The fish in, uh, in here are quite used to this glass box, uh, just because they, when I add new fish, I put them in the glass box, so they're not overly frightened of it as if they've never seen one before. Now, as you can see, it's time to go introduce them to their new home. They will go into an acclimation box, the same as all the other fish, although they won't be going for as long because um, there's no other tangs in the tank, therefore I'm not as worried compared to obviously when I was adding the angels. Right, so I've been in the tank for a few hours now. Eagle Eye viewers will notice I have three rather than two because apparently I have no self-control. Um, so all that is left to do now is to leave them. I will probably leave them for a couple of days. The gem tank doesn't know the sail fin. So it's, it's so interesting when you look at fish properly sometimes. The gem tank is not displaying to the yellow tank because even though they're in different tanks, they obviously recognize each other, but it is displaying towards the sail fin. So uh, that's what it's clearly going. Even though it's in a different environment, it's, it's, it knows that it's a new fish. So um, anyway, that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week and I'll see you next time.